Hi, welcome to Wine TV. I'm Amber. And I'm Dave. And today we're talking about sparkling. Now, this uh, the reason we're doing sparkling is because you guys, we put out a thing on our Facebook page, which will be down below at the end of this, if you want to go and have a look and push the like button. But uh, on what you wanted to talk about with our, our Wine TV this week. And uh, we got a couple back, but the most popular was a sparkling special. So, just for you guys, we've um, hunted around and we picked... Some couple of great sparklings, both from the same winery called Stonebridge Wines in the Clare Valley, and it's a white sparkling and a red sparkling. Now, the story behind these is we always love wines with a story, is it's called the Two Sisters, which is named after the winemaker and owner of the wine um, winery, um's daughter. Um, and they're both like both daughters. You know, anyone that's had a girl that's had a sister, you know, you can be like two peas in a pod. Sometimes, you know, you're really together, sometimes you're very separate. So but these ones, they're both different, but they're both great and they're both very special. Yeah, and, and I think that's a good thing. And, and wines that have a bit of bit of story behind it always good. Now the um the one the varieties that we are, this is a, a sparkling Pinot Gris. So uh, you might see sparkling Pinot quite a lot, Pinot Noir, but this is a totally, totally, completely different grape variety. This wine usually stays white, where a Pinot Noir will be made into a red wine. So this is always a white wine and, and will stay that way. It's a white grape. Um, and a sparkling Shiraz. Now, these sparklings are made in your traditional method Champenois, which is a French sort of style. Um, and I will tell you a little bit a bit more about that because it actually changes the way that the wine tastes. Before I open this, I just want to show you guys that this is um this actually when, when we unwrapped it, it uh it's got a different type of closure on it. You usually have the the wire and the cork and that sort of thing, and this one had that. But this one is something new, and I've never seen it before. Uh, and I'm not sure what it's called, but you guys kind of have a look at it. I don't know if you can see it there. It's um. It's not, it's not a vino lock, and it's not a screw cap, and it's not a cork. No, it's made of plastic, and there's a label called Zerk on the side of it, so maybe Zerk, it's a Zerk top, I don't know. But it looks like a resealable thing, and all you do is just pull it off, and it seals, and you can seal it back up, which is, is quite handy. So, um, like Amber was saying before, these are uh, bottle fermented, made traditional, and all that means is that there's, the wine is made kind of as normal, but... There's a second fermentation and it gets a bit wanky from there, but it happens in the bottle. And um, the bottles are moved around to stop all the yeast settling in there. And you get this little plug at the end of the bottle because they're stored upside down, um, full of yeast and crap like that. So, um, not very tasty. No. So what they do is they disgorge it. And what that means is that the, the cap, the tip of the bottle gets frozen which freezes all that crap and all that bits in the middle. That's stuff you don't like. Um, then they pop it open, that pops out. And then they just top it back up with usually a little bit of liqueur sometimes. I'm not sure if this one, if that was done that way, but probably with the sparkling I red, I would say definitely. But um, and it's just topped back up and then resealed and that's ready to go. So if you ever see something that says disgorged, which doesn't really mean that much to you, but that's what it means. It was disgorged then. What's really cool about bottle fermentation is you get a lot of um, cheaper sparklings that are actually carbonated, not bottle fermented, which means that they don't get that lovely stream of bubbles coming out all nice and even sized. They're more like Coca-Cola bubbles where um, they've got that kind of, you know, big uneven sort of looking bubbles that all kind of pop up. So this one's your lovely beautiful stream so you know it's going to be made in a nice French way and it's going to taste great. And, and usually you know if you pour some out quite quickly and it bubbles up, even all those little bubbles that bubble out of it, if it's made properly will be quite even as they come up. So you'll get this big frothy foamy sort of even bubble thing. This is really lovely. Um, it's quite dry, it's not a sweet sparkling. A lot, um, of, um, a lot of pear and apple and stuff yeah, like that in there. It's very crisp. And a little bit of, little bit of bread I get from it from the you know, like that freshly cooked bread thing, and that, that's just the yeast that's It'll used in it. Lovely with some um, cheese and also olive bread. I think it's just good on its own, actually. Yeah. <laughs> just oh. kind of like that. But um, what's interesting too is I did put these out here. Now, now um, traditionally, just a bit of to digress a little bit, but um, everybody usually drinks champagne or, or sparkling wine out of um, champagne flutes, which are like these traditional sort of looking ones here. Um, now, the, the reason for this was when, um, when it was all sort of in the 1800s and you were going to parties and that sort of thing, is that when you got knocked with this, it was much harder to spill what was left in your glass. Compared to the old style glass, which was like that vintage boat style. Boat style, yeah. So, 
Since then, this has been the way to drink sparkling wine. Uh, a lot of French winemakers and that sort of thing in, since have said, and you know... Wine fanatics, people who are really obsessed about drinking the, white, the right wine out of the right glass. glass. So, like, you know, and there's no specific glass for the, the alternative to this, but um, using a larger glass like this, and that doesn't have to be bigger, just another a white wine glass, if you're that way inclined and you really want to get a little bit of extra flavour out of it, sometimes people will use a sparkling out of something like that. And it does kind of open up the aromas of more and give you a bit more, but, you know, it's each to their own. But that's just a to bit me, of novel trivia for you. If I'm drinking a sparkling, I want to drink out of the flute because that's just something what I associate with sparkling, and that's what makes it feel special to me. If I wanted to drink out of a normal glass, I'd just drink a normal white wine. Yeah. Um, unless I had some really lovely vintage uh, champagne glasses, which I don't have and have always wanted. Um, hint, hint, David. Okay. Um, Does Reed make them? Uh, I'm not sure, mm. but um, but I'm always going to drink out of the flute. Yeah. So a bit of bit of trivia that you know useless trivia for you, but um, that's, that's we, where it came from. Should we move on to the rest? Uh, yes, absolutely. Now the next one is a sparkling Shiraz. Now I don't know if you guys have had sparkling Shiraz. If you have, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, get some, try it. You know, it's, do whatever you can to try some sparkling Shiraz because it is phenomenal. It, it's really great. It's it's a new. I wouldn't say it's a new variety, but it's not something that everyone has had. And it's been around for a while. And you know what? Australia actually probably is is either one of the only, or I think they actually started this whole sparkling Shiraz, sparkling red thing. It's you know as it starts to as we start to head into some of the winter months, um, people don't always want to drink a sparkling wine, so I think it's a summer drink. Look at the then, bubbles on that, just quickly. Let's see, it's so yeah. Lively, this this was a very lively bottle. You know, make sure you hold on to the cork probably when you're opening it because I wasn't concentrating earlier and um, it almost took off on me. No, no but, just opening that little wire bit just went. Pop straight out. But this red, it's a great winter alternative to a white sparkling. It's beautiful with a barbecue. You might start with your white on your cheeses and then move in with your steak and salad and burger and um, and have your sparkling red with that. And you know what? It's just it's it's just like and some it might be a little bit weird to some people, but it's just think of your nice big heavy mm. Shiraz or Cabernet. It's just like that. And this has got heaps of oak and chocolate, lots oh, of spice. So much berries, lots of a bit. Berry and like dark fruits yeah, in there. Might be a really nice dark chop like fruit and nut chocolate. You know. But the second fermentation mm. in something like this, in the complex grape variety, gives you like this extra bit of kick and it's just it's, something really exciting, really interesting it's, and it just makes the Shiraz that little bit extra special. Yeah. And I think a really good explanation or not explanation, but a good good saying is um, one of our friends in the Barocca, in, in the Barossa always calls this a Barossa Barocca, you know, so... It's a good morning drink wine. Hangover recovery, you know, if you've had a big night on the piss and you, and you want to wake up and you know how people say keep going, well, it's a good thing to keep going on. We do not, advocate, not we, we advocate. advocate responsible drinking and don't <laughs> think that you should necessarily be drinking before 10 in the morning. Um, but if you decide that Except you've got, on acceptable days like you, Christmas Day. You if know. you're having a special occasion, then this is a good um, wine to start with instead of leaving your big red Shiraz until um, the very end of the day. So... Well, I finished mine, so that's that's sensational. So, to wrap it up, we've got two great wines here. They're both around $20 each at the moment. And um, we've got your sparkling wine, Pinot Gris, and your sparkling Shiraz. And they're both by Stonebridge, and they're great together, all great separately. So definitely give them a go. Something a bit different, again, which we'd like to bring you. They've both got a bit of a story. And you know what? With the sparkling Shiraz, if you've never tried a sparkling Shiraz, you have to get and some and try it. And this is a great one to start with because it's full of flavour. And if a French champagne is out of your budget, these are a great alternative. A great and sometimes better. Yeah, I'm somebody buy Australian me, when you can. Somebody it's might shoot great. me for saying that, but you know what? I think um, we're all full buying Australians, so especially boutique wines. Great. All right, guys, have a good fun. We've rambled long enough. Cheers. Cheers to you.